as quilters, we're drawn to our art and creating nature by patterns and colors and designs that we can put together to create something beautiful to share with others. And this is that. This is a rail fence quilt. And I love taking something traditional, a traditional patchwork block, and changing it into something a little bit different, a little updated, some new colors, and completely change the block around. I wish I could take full credit, but it was a mistake. And I worked around it, and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. And the black quilt is my Wild Rails quilt. It's the original quilt that I made. And the pattern for that is down below under the uh, the description. But I had started that quilt, and I cut my strips the wrong size, and I had to figure out what to do with that. And so I came up with a solution. It worked great, and I love how it turned out. Now, what you're actually seeing there is the back of the quilt, because I enjoy creating a fun back on quilts that reflects the front as well. And in this case, I put just a strip of rails diagonally from corner to corner, mixed in between the uh, pieces of the, back, the backing fabric, and I think it turned out great. The bright and colorful quilt next to it, that's the new version, and I really like it. It's larger larger blocks and larger strips. It's all done with piece quilting, where the other, excuse me, it's all done with strip quilting, where the black quilt was all individual pieces and so much more work. And that is a good thing about some of our modern quilting today, is there are some great techniques and time savers that we can use. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I want to share this quilt with you. There is a download below, plus I'll put the link to the original uh, the blog post so you can read more about it and see some full-size pictures. But I hope you enjoy this. We're going to make a quilt and it's going to be fun. Oh please don't forget, subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Now let's get quilting. Well I wanted to show you the fabric that I'm using in this particular quilt. And while you can call it a stash quilt, a fat quarter stash quilt, a scrap quilt, I, I just use whatever I have. And what I really like about this is the opportunity to use a lot of different fabrics in the same quilt. Now, this is where I started. I had this little bundle um, that I received recently, and I know I shared it with you all some time ago. But these were the darker colors that I had set aside because I didn't want to use them in the quilt I was making. I kept looking at them and I thought, I really like these. So what I've decided to do is pull these colors into a larger color scheme. And I kind of broke it down into two colorways, mostly this, this uh, pink with the purpley colors and then a separate colorway with blues kind of the blues and the turquoise and so i pulled lots of different fabrics together and i divided them into two different piles and two different groups by their colorways i also wanted some i don't want to call it background but this is like a rail fence it is a rail fence and I wanted to have some contrast to create that rail. So I brought in these light backgrounds. I also had some extra two and a half inch strips. And this is what helped me decide what size to make my quilt because I could use some of these, but I wanted my um, blocks to be strip set. So I went with the two and a half inch and I used a few of these, but mostly I used fat quarters cut into two and a half inch pieces. Uh, two and a half inch strips and then sew them together. So from here what I did is I took my strips, let's see I have a few here and let's say we have a turquoise and there's some blue in here and so I put three strips together and I sewed them but I also wanted to go with a contrast because with a rail fence there's usually one color that stands out more that becomes your rail so this is essentially how I piece the quilt I have three two and a half inch strips by however long and we'll talk about that in just a minute there's some different things that you can do there and then this is a one and a half inch not only did I want this to stand out in color but by size and by doing it in by size it really 
draws more attention. And I'm going to show you that in another quilt here in just a minute. Um, I sort of discovered this by mistake one time, and I was making a quilt, and I wanted to use up some fabric, and I cut them all the wrong size, which is kind of a disaster. But, on the other hand, when I sat down after I finally said, okay, I'm going to figure this out, I came up with a really fun idea. So don't ever think you just have to stop where you are and forget about what you're working on because there are other options, there are other ways to make it work. And, you know, be a little creative and daring and, and see what uh, what comes out. So in this particular case, I like I said, I went with two different colorways. So I have, let me move these out of the way. My goodness. So I have my, my pinks and purple with a creamy color. And the reason I did that is, for the most part, blues and pinks go well with a, a creamy color. I mean, yellow can work really well. So I thought that would be good. And because this print has a lot of colorful dots in there it's going to match just about everything so it's a really good blender and then this one because I wanted this other rail to stand out from that rail I went with a white background and a lot of the white fabrics I have or excuse me a lot of the blue fabrics I have have white in them so that's going to really draw that out so these are my two colorways that I'm using in the quilt and because I had fat quarters, I just cut them the length that my, you know, my fabric was. And when you sew a rail patchwork like this in a strip set, and you need to have a square, your square needs to be the same in both directions. So what I did is theoretically, when we have a two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, and one and a half, we should on our finished quilt end up with two, 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 and one. But we're not all perfect with our seam allowances. So what we need to do is make sure they were at least consistent. And so this should measure, let me think, two, four, six, and seven. This should measure seven and a half. And when I measure it, I am pretty darn close. And let's see how this one does. Yep, that's about an eighth of an inch off, but yeah, that's, yeah, they're pretty good. So these are going to be seven and a half wide, so I need to cut each block at seven and a half inches so I have a square. And what I usually do is, you'll notice on these, yeah, I'll do it this way, that I'll start from one end and keep it pretty regular, pretty close, and I leave the salvages to the far end because that's what's going to be cut off. So these are already cut ends. All I have to do is come in, trim it off, and then start cutting my seven and a half. So let's go ahead and do that. I want to show you. I'm probably only going to get two squares out of this. Let's see. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. And I always double check because it is just so easy to make a mistake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. Especially with an odd number like seven. I mean, we use five and ten so much that, um, or at least I do in the quilts that I make. So it's kind of nice to um, work with some different numbers, but then you also have to keep track of, of just what you're doing. So this will measure at the 22 and a half. Okay, now these extra pieces, because this isn't going to measure seven, this only measures, let's see if I measure this short part, it measures about six inches, but you know, remember the asymmetrical quilts, there's a lot we can do with this. So these I'm keeping for a future quilt, and when I bring these out, you're going to be amazed at how much fun we can uh, have with those. So again, I'm keeping my piles separate into my blue colorways and my pink and purple. And let's see. Let's trim this one. I have to cut this way. I just some some folks are ambidextrous cutters, but not me. I can only do it in one direction. So I will line this up and just trim off those pieces put that aside 
And let's start cutting right here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. And then we'll cut our second one as well. And I'm going to put that on a straight line just to make sure I didn't waver. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. And again, we've got a great piece on the end for a future quilt that I'm anxious to start with. So now we have these blocks and what we're going to do is create a rail fence. And because I have two of every block, I sort of split my pile. I have two of every one and I, I split my pile in half. So this is the first of each, each pair. And this is the second. So as I'm laying my quilt out, I'm going to go through all these first, then I'll get the second ones. And that kind of helps spread things around. I don't want prints, blocks together that have the same prints, or at least not too close together. So I have this and I have the blue. So I'm going to put one blue here and one blue here. And then I'll just stack them on top of each other. So the way we do a rail fence is we start at the top let me get that there and then we just start building our rails and we turn our blocks 90 degrees and you see how we're forming a rail now these all have white backgrounds they have different prints but that's okay now i can decide at this point these just happen to be the same print whether to go with it or just take the next block and I think I'm going to go with the next block. And I think this is still on the camera here. So we have a good rail happening right here. Then what we're going to do is bring in our pink rails. And we're going to start the same way. And they're going to, whoops, this one goes this way. They're going to parallel each other. So let me see. Am I going to be able to get all this on the camera? I think so. So now we're going to have this one. And you see how this... Because we need another one right here. And then this one would continue over here. I know you can't quite see all that. But I just wanted to show you then that we kind of continue in this direction. And this one's going to be on top. So what we're creating here are these wonderful, I'm running out of room, wonderful patchwork blocks that are filled with color. But what I really like is that we have this pattern going through. Whoops, and I turned that the wrong way. There we go. I knew something was wrong. Now, another thing that also occurs is when I created my strip sets, I made sure that on the top, where are the pieces that we cast aside, that on the top I had a narrow piece, and at the bottom was my darkest. And these two are just middle, you know, sort of coordinating um, some light, some dark, but the darkest are at the bottom. And the reason I did that is to get this other rail going through. So technically this is called a triple rail because you have this is one, you have this as two, and then you have this darker one that follows through. Now, these aren't the same colors, but even though we go to a dark blue, to a dark pink, to a dark blue, to a dark pink, they're going to kind of create some continuity. And it depends on how you want to really stage that and bring it out for more focus there in your quilting because you can quilt these in a way that will cause these to really stand out more or you can just focus on these two so there's a lot you can do with a pattern like this now what i want to show you is the original quilt that i made with this pattern 
Um, like I said, it was a mistake. I had a bunch of really dark, dark black, dark blue, and dark green batiks, and I didn't know what to do with. So let me show you. Give me one moment. Well, this is what I called my wild rails. I had an abundance of these dark batiks. And what I had done is I was getting the batiks a month, and for years I did this. And I wasn't using the dark. I was living on an island, so we mostly used the blues and the greens, and that's what everybody liked. So that's what I quilted. So I had an abundance of these, and I thought, what am I going to do? I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and um, cut these into strips. And I cut hundreds of them. And they were cut two by, I think, four and a half. Well, you know, I wasn't thinking about the seam allowance. They should have been cut at five. It wasn't going to work. And when I put three of these together, see, this is one block right here. When I put three of these together, it was a rectangle and not a square. So I packaged these all up nice in a Ziploc, and probably every six months I'd take them out, I'd look at them, and I'd just shake my head and think, oh, well, what am I going to do with these? And it wasn't until a bit later that I found some just really wild zebra fabric. And this is quite a wild looking quilt. And it's just, it was the colors, it was, it was made for my, my eldest son, and these are colors that he loves, and he's into the neons and the bright colors, and so this worked out really well. What I did to make it work, as you can see, is I just cut a narrow rail, and I had these tiny little blocks, I don't think they measure even a full four, well, probably measure four inches, because these are four and a half, but that's small. And it makes a great, great pattern. And I have, I don't even know how many different fabrics are in here. And what was also pretty cool is I had these batik squares. Um, and this says something, you know, in Chinese that's quite charming about, you know, life and happiness and all that kind of thing. I, I don't even remember, but, but I just thought it was really, really fun. I kind of created a, a little center piece with that in there and it just kind of set the quilt off in a fun way. But the other thing that I wanted to show you about this, when when you buy your fabrics and you buy the same fabrics that you like all the time, you're less apt to step outside your box. Because I was getting a variety of quilt or variety of fabrics each month there were some that were favorites there were some i wasn't sure what to do with as others i thought oh my goodness what will i ever do with that but then when it comes time to make a quilt and you start branching out you have other fabrics to draw from and go oh you know that is kind of a funky color but that works really well with this and that pattern and notice how the different patterns in here um, the graphics. You've got round organic lines, you have some straight sort of crosshatch, thin wavy lines, and, and there's just all kinds of things going on. Oh, I like the swirls. And it just really keeps it interesting. And then the other thing with something like this is the quilting. And it can be kind of daunting. And one of my cheater quilt <laughs> methods is to just go along and do a sort of a long, what do I want to say, um, swervy line. It, it sort of curves, it's like a long, an elongated S-curve. That's what I'm looking for. I make some wide, I make some narrow, because if I were to try and do every one exactly the same, it's not going to happen. And if I had them mostly all the same and one or two were sort of out of whack, it looks like a mistake. This way, it's very free form, it's forgiving, and no one's going to say, oh, look, this one is like a half inch different than that. Well, it's because it's supposed to be, and that's okay. So those were the, the key things I wanted to talk to you about this, but I wanted you to see this pattern. There is one other thing. Don't forget about your quilt backs. This is such a fun quilt back. I can't wait to show you. I, I think it's almost more of a favorite than the front of the quilt. So what I did is I had a lot of extra blocks. Now I'm going to have to do a, an overhead large shot, lay this out. This baby's huge. Um, it's like an 80 or 90 
some odd inch quilt. But what I did across the entire back of the quilt is I used this fun bright print, but I did them in stripes. And so I made one set of these rails diagonally from corner to corner on the back of the quilt. And it is just stunning. It's such a fun, fun way to finish this off. So, you know, don't forget about your quilt backs. And I know we've kind of gone off on a tangent, but I just, I just wanted to show you this quilt. This was sort of my inspiration to asymmetrical rail fence quilting to begin with, because it's like it gave... I gave myself permission to create what I want with what I have and how to make it work. It doesn't always have to be exactly the same. You don't have to have equal pieces. You can go with narrow, large, and narrow, and just it gets really interesting and it creates a greater design that you're going to be happy with. So feel free to play around with what works and, you know, come up with some some fun things and get some wild and crazy fabrics and and just step outside your box every once in a while and see what what you find you might be quite surprised and very pleased here's the finished quilt and you can see the rail design here the secondary rail here and then our third rail well here it is I almost couldn't find it, it goes this way and see how it picks up in the next row so this darker one runs between the two narrow ones. So that makes it a lot of fun. Like I said, that's what's called a triple rail fence. And it just looks wonderful. And all these prints just keep it so interesting. I'm going to um, get a shot of this all in one. It's, it's hard to really get the full feel for this quilt when you can only see little bits at a time. But I will go ahead and uh, get a full shot for you and show it at the end. And in the meantime, I hope you get some ideas about some, some ways you can use your fabrics and maybe try a pattern that's a little different than normal and, and step outside that box and just do some really, really pretty, pretty uh, designs. And oh, it's just great fun. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me show you this last uh, shot of this quilt laid out and then we're going to be finished with air. I love it. This has been a great, great video. I'm excited about this tutorial and about this quilt. So let's finish up. Here's the finished baby size quilt of the uh, Wild Rails pattern. And remember that is a free download down in the uh, directions below the video. What I like best about the way this one is done is with the two colorways. You kind of It's hard to see if you're real close to the image, but if you step back or squint your eyes, you really see the, the two different colors stand out and contrast against each other. So you have those narrow rails that divide and create a really good diagonal design, but then you've got the colors, which is wonderful. You've got the blues and then the the pinky violets and and they work really really well together so i'm very happy with how this quilt turned out i hope you all get a chance to try it and uh, enjoy watching this tutorial and learned a bit from it and do be sure you check out the original uh, website with the larger quilt that i showed you in the beginning because that one um you'll you'll enjoy seeing those photos the pictures of that it's really hard to get into a uh, small camera because it's such a big quilt but thank you so much for being here it's been my pleasure to share with you i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please please subscribe and let others know that we're having a really enjoyable time together here quilting and definitely a thumbs up that really helps thanks so much have a wonderful day